Okay, welcome back everybody to our tutorial on building a AI phishing agent for World of Warcraft using OpenCV and computer vision. Um, since you're still with us, I'm assuming that you're finding this tutorial uh, fun and interesting and if that, I hope that's the case and if that is the case, please consider liking and subscribing my channel. Um, I would really appreciate that. I'd also love to hear feedback from you guys on you know how I'm doing, how do you like the videos, what would you like to see, what content interests you. Um, I love doing computer vision and AI projects so I'll probably be doing a lot more videos and sharing with you guys and I'd love to explore this together and we can uh, we can find some cool and interesting projects related to video games or other, to or other, other topics. So let's get started uh, on today's agent. Today's going to be a fun one because we're going to start putting things together. Um, so let's open up our phishingagent.py and our main.py and let's go in here. So if you remember from the last time, uh, what we did was we were able to get this match template and I showed visually what we're look what the computer sees. The computer sees this black and white image and the things that are closest to what we're looking for are going to shine white. There's going to be white spots and the things that are the least likely to be those options are going to be black and and there's two ways to process that we can either just take the maximum best choice which probably makes sense for our application um, since we're looking for that one fishing bobber or we could try to find all the white spots on the image that are above a certain threshold and that could indicate these are all the nodes that spawn or or these are all the player locations or whatever you're doing uh, or, you know, it could be not even gaming related. This could be related to any sort of computer vision. So today we're going to start tying it together and we're going to actually uh, let this thing find the bobber. So this is going to be a fun, a fun one. So um, inside of phishingagent.py, the first thing is let's, let's delete this. We're not, we're not going to use this uh, main function anymore. We're going to be running from our main.py and we don't want to even accidentally start it from here. So now f since there's no you know, uh, main anymore, we can run this file. Nothing's gonna happen since this is all just, uh, you know, declarative stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to, um, I want to comment out these lines of code. I'll leave them in there uh, at the bottom, but we're not gonna be showing the match template. We just wanna store that so the computer can make some uh, informative decisions. And um, what we want to do is, um, because of the way we've programmed this, where we start up the main agent, it would probably be good to do a quick check here um, to make sure that uh, the main agent uh, has, has fully started up. So the way we can do that kind of quick is we can say if self.mainagent.cur image is not none then we're going to do this stuff. So that way, if we spawn both agents kind of quickly within succession, but the main agent hasn't started pulling in those screenshots, you don't want this thing trying to access a none value. Um, another thing is, let's, un let's comment out Pi Auto GUI's pressing of one, only because that's annoying when we're running and debugging this thing. Um, if that thing is accidentally pressing one keys in places it's not supposed to, that's just going to add another layer of bugs and annoyances. So, uh, as I mentioned, that that can that can get you uh, your agent's running and it's typing one into your uh, source code. <laughs> so it's an annoyance. So let's turn it off. We can easily turn that back on when we actually want to start running this thing. All right. So we've got our lure location and our lure location array. So. Um, what we want to do now is we want to find where the bobber is. So to find the bobber, as I mentioned, we're looking for the hotspot, that maximum value. And OpenCV is going to provide a function that's going to make this real easy for us to do as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the CV min max location, uh, OpenCV's min max location function. And this will actually return four things. It's going to return the minimum value, which means the thing that's the least likely to be our object, the maximum value, which is the value of the thing that's most likely to be our object. It's going to return the location of that minimum, 
Again, the location of the thing that's the least likely our object and the location of the thing that is most likely to be our object. And the function is min max location. And we're going to pass in our lure location array. Okay. And what's kind of cool is the you might think, well, why would I want the minimum? Well, you can think of it the inverse too. If imagine you have a game where um, like there's a floor tile and there's one tile that has a bomb on it or something. Well, you, what you might do is you might try to find the one thing that doesn't match that's the least likely to be what what's in your template and that might be what you're searching for actually. So, you know, you can think about all the different ways that you can use this. This is just a tool and there's lots of interesting ways that it can be applied. So we've got our max location. So now why don't we print this out and then we can actually see how this is working live. So we'll just do print max location. So this should be the lo this should be the location of the bobber or if there's no bobber on the screen this should be the location of the thing that is you know mathematically the closest to the bobber. So let's let's see if this code's going to run. Let's see if we got any problems. So we're going to start our main agent first. I'm going to give that a second to kind of spin up and start capturing the screen behind the scenes. Then we're going to hit the F key and we see the casting. Okay, and now we get a location. This is width and height. So this is 12, oops, sorry, I hit the corner on my thing there, so goofed it up. So this first one was 1216. So from the top left corner, it's 12 pixels away from the left. The top left corner, it's 12 pixels away from the left and 16 pixels down. So somewhere up in this top left corner actually has the closest match to the fishing bobber template. Okay, so it didn't like, it doesn't like calling self.mainagent.currentImage in this match template. I'm assuming because this is updating much quicker than maybe this calculation's occurring. I think that's causing an error in some cases. So let's do this. If, if that's not none, we want to make sure that we've started the agent. Let's do a copy. So we'll do, you know, current image equals self.mainagent.currentImage. And then let's, instead of calling this out of the other class, we'll call this local one here. So let's make that change and then let's run it and see how it performs. Let's see if that solves that problem. So we'll start that, we'll start casting, let's see. All right, let's do one more thing on our update screen. Let's add a five millisecond sleep so that we get a slight delay in the update on that as well. And let's see if that solves our problem. So my agents, initially it thinks it's that 1216. Now it, it's found the bobber at 1142, 420. So if I move this uh, down, you're gonna see the Y increase. This is roughly halfway on my screen. If I go to the bottom, this should be all the way close to the 1080. See that it's close to 1080. And then if I go to the right end edge, this should be roughly 500 in the Y axis. And yeah, the, you know, that, so you can tell the resolution of my monitor. So you can see that it's right on that spot. So that's awesome. So if I move this around the screen, if I zoom it in and zoom it out, the size of it, you can see, let's see if this still catches that same spot. See, it's still catching it. That's pretty cool. If I make it bigger, let's see if I make it bigger here. There you go, it's still catching it. So it's still roughly halfway here and it's about 13. So if I go all the way to the left hand corner, it should be around 0, 0,500. Approximately, something like that. There you go, 15, 519. So you can see we got that bobber. Uh, we've got the location, 
the computer is be able to see that bobber exactly where it is. So if that thing moves around, it's going to be able to find it. It's constantly able to find it. That's pretty cool. So let's kill this agent. You're probably going to have to hard kill it because the uh, fishing agent has a while, a permanent while loop here without an ability to break. So you're going to have to break that. So let's look at what we've got. We've got our cast done. We've got our finding done because we're able to find the location. So let's let's add one more thing for today's video, and then we're going to call it. We're going to we're going to put the mouse on the lure. So this is going to be actually pretty easy. What we're going to call is PyAutoGUI dot move to and then we're going to put in our x so this is going to be our max location or actually you know what we've got to call this function too so let's go sorry let's go back so um if we find it what we're going to do is we're going to call move to lure we're going to call self dot move to lure and what we're going to do is we're going to pass in that max location that we just got okay so move to lure is going to take an argument it's going to take max location and what we want to do is we want to move pi out of GUI we want to move the mouse to the max location I don't know if this can take a tuple. I forgot. Let's just try it and see. If this crashes, then we will have to break up that tuple. Oh, it works. See, my mouse is up here in the corner. And it's going to keep moving there. Now let's see. So I moved to that corner. Let's see on the next update what it's going to move to. There you go. Right on the bobber. So we've already got it. We've got our fishing agent tracking the bobber visually, and it's able to move the mouse there. Awesome. So let me kill this program, and let's do one more thing for today, and then we're going to call it. So on the bobber, on the movement to the bobber, we don't want that mouse to just move instantly because that's, first of all, that's um, not realistic. And second of all, we're, we're trying to emulate human behavior, and we also want to avoid any anti-cheats and stuff. So a lot of that anti-cheat stuff, it's going to pick up on weird stuff. If, if the agent is playing like a human, if there's some delay, if there's some randomization, if it's moving normally, there's no way any anti-cheat will ever catch this. You know, aside from the fact that you're not talking back to chat or something like that, because we're not we're not hacking into memory we're not doing anything we're not doing anything that a human player wouldn't do so that's the cool part but but we've still got to do it in a way that a human would do it I guess that's the only the key so um, when we move to the lure we're gonna do something um, a little bit different so we're gonna move to this location um, I'm, I'm just gonna break this up because this is how I've got it on my other file so we're gonna we're gonna go to this max location zero. That's our x coordinate. We're gonna go to max location y. That's our uh, one. That's our y coordinate. Okay, and then this is the cool part. So what I want to do is we want to create a duration. So how long is it gonna take for the mouse to move there? We don't want it to be instantaneous, which is what it is now. So let's say that that's gonna take half of a second. And then we can um, we can choose a type of movement. So it could be exactly linear. It can do ease in, ease out. I'm going to use this thing called ease in, ease out. It's kind of a little bit, I feel like it's a little bit more natural. So when you move your mouse to an object, it's not like you go from point A to point B just instantly or you, know, you, don't, you don't just follow the same speed from A to B. You might move the mouse quick and then you might slow down right towards the end. So You'll, you'll see what I mean. So we'll do cv.tm underscore, uh, oh, sorry. I don't know what I'm copying over here. So we're going to do, do pyautogy.easeout. Oh, pyauto, 
GUI dot ease out quad. And I got too many parentheses here. All right. So what this is going to do is there's different, um, you can look at Pyauto GUI's documentation. There's different uh, methods that, um, you know, there's linear, nonlinear, etc. So this is kind of an ease out. So it provides that natural movement because it's not just from A to B the same speed, if that makes any sense. And maybe to make it a little more exaggerated, let's do, uh, we'll do like one second. Maybe it's a little slower than I would normally do, but let's try it. So we'll start our thing. All right, see how it moved the mouse up there? All right, now I'm going to let, the, let it move to the bobber. And I don't know if you can see that, but as it gets right towards, as it gets closer towards the bobber, it kind of slows down. You see that? I moved the mouse while it was moving. That's why it was off. So I won't touch it this time. So you see that? See how it's a little bit more natural? We could also do something like introduce some randomization into this. So you might want to do like a movement. Like let's say we were moving from here to here. If we wanted to get real sophisticated, we could do like a two or a three step movement where maybe we move to here, here, here. But, you know, in a very small amount, very fast, so that it, it gives the appearance that, you know, your mouse is a little bit shaky as you're moving it. It's not just an exact straight line. So there's lots of different techniques that we can employ, but this is definitely going to be fine. So we just we just let the agent find the bobber and put the mouse right on there for us. So I think that's going to be enough for today's video. That's a huge progress. Um, in the next video, I guess we just have to add a little bit more functionality like uh, bite detection and clicking. But, you know, we've already got half of the core functionality done now. So great work following along. Really appreciate you. Again, you know, like or subscribe to this if you find it interesting. And let's, uh, let's build some cool stuff together. Thanks. Bye.